Okay, uh, hello everyone, how are you guys? Great. <laughs> uh, I'm really, really sorry uh, about the hiccup here at the very start. It's not because of WordPress that much, we you know. Uh, okay, so we're here to talk about a little bit about Sweden uh, SE, the case, uh, and how we use WordPress in promoting Sweden abroad. And my name is Per Hordal. And I work as a uh, product manager, digital communications in Stockholm, Sweden. And this is the date of today. Okay. So Sweden in the world. I guess you guys are very familiar with Sweden already because it's in Europe. But the further away you go, the less known we are. Uh, so is a strong global image of a brand important? We think so, of course. That's why we started Sweden.se some time ago. Uh, Swiss reputation, are you familiar with these? Uh, the one to the left is Alba, pretty famous, right? We got to the right is uh, the former Prime Minister of Sweden, Olof Palme. Uh, but we have our challenges. So then, what is Sweden.sc? It's the official gateway to Sweden and it was launched uh, a long time ago in terms of the internet in 2002. And it is a joint project involving Council for the Promotion of Sweden. Uh, and it's the official channel for uh, promoting Sweden abroad. Um, it has a lot of facts. Uh, we think that it's a really efficient way of reaching out and a strategic tool. Um, and it's a summary of what Sweden has to offer. It's like uh, Wikipedia 2.0 almost. Uh, and then, like I said before, 2002, a long time ago, and then we decided to revamp the site in 2013, and this is our wish list. So, we wanted relevant content, great images, open source, of course, WordPress, that's why we all are in this room right now. Uh, we wanted the design to be responsive, because of these devices, you know. Uh, we wanted to be in forefront of digital communications. Uh, again, we wanted the facts to be represented in an interesting way. And also, since we're targeting the whole world, we wanted the, the, the access times to be really great. So, fast and global access. And then we decided we wanted a new identity. Uh, one identity that we could ad adapt to the whole world, to all the target audiences. Um, it's an international communication up ahead. And of course, yellow and blue, that's the Swedish flag, right? Uh, it's a symbol that we already have. So we decided to implement this, this flag on every single market. We also came up with our own typeface. So this is the, actually the official Swedish typeface. And it's called Sweden Sands. And then what happened? The actual site. It was launched uh, yeah, almost two years ago now. Tada, WordPress, of course. It has web design, and we use tags instead of those menus that we're all used to back in the days. Uh, it's responsive, working on every single platform out there. Uh, we have use fast global hosting in the cloud using Amazon, AWS, and also this unites all the Swedish organizations uh, promoting Sweden abroad. So here it is, I guess you already checked it out on your computers and uh, uh, smartphones. And this is what it looks like. So you have uh, stories here, it's like uh, a magazine where you can just sit in your back home in your so far on the tube or whatever, and just explore Sweden. And this is what a story looks like. Retina display images, really nice content, again presented in a nice way. And here you find the content we have, the stories, we have fact sheets, we have quick facts, and again the great images. Uh, I think I should mention social media as well, because we use uh, the social media to promote the content we have. And we have today 3 million followers in total. That's quite an amazing number, I would say. 
And we're uh, present on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, YouTube, Vimeo. And then what? Other languages? What, how do we do with those? Uh, we launched a version in Chinese using the new identity and profile. And it was, was launched in Beijing and Shanghai in June this year. And we have uh, versions in Russian and Arabic coming up early next year. And again, you see the, the flag uh, and the identity adapted to the different regions. Uh, so I would like to do like a sub-case here. We're, uh, we're supposed to talk about Sweden.sc, but Sweden.c and it's an adaption of Sweden.sc. And we wanted to reuse the Sweden.sc identity in China. We translated uh, the existing content, we reused images from our image bank, uh, we wanted to response to design, of course, because Chinese people use mobiles. Uh, and we had, we started with the thinking, let's, let's uh, assume that Swindup as it will work. So it was an iterative process, uh, starting off with Sweden.se. And also the team was mainly based in Stockholm, including Linus there. So, to put things in perspective, internet in China, they have 700 million mobile uh, internet users, sorry. Uh, that's a crazy number. Five years ago, that number was like half of that. 80% uh, use smartphones. They have different platforms all together. They have Weibo, WeChat, Yuku, Baidu. And I read that Weibo, I read this morning that, uh, no, sorry, WeChat, uh, they have uh, half a billion uh, users as of now. And I, for most people, these channels are not, not known at all, actually. Uh, and this is the result. Here you see the adaption of the Sweden.se identity, and this is Sweden.cn. So please check it out. It might be a bit slow, though, because it's hosted in China. And this is what the, the facts part looks like, and you have the different stories, it's all translated. And here is a story. So, what's next for Sweden.se? We want to use more infographics, we want to use more custom-made storytelling, uh, more films, uh, gamifications, and then What's next? We don't know that. We want to uh, be open for new platforms, whether it will be apps or virtual reality or whatever, but uh, it's an exciting future for Sweden.se, I think. So, was WordPress the right choice? Yes. So, why is that? It's easy, intuitive, and it's fun to use for editors. It's open source. Uh, of course, it's affordable. Uh, you have a lot of develop, uh, development uh, opportunities. You have plugins. Uh, you have the simplicity, and it's also CEO friendly. So, yes. the stage is yours. Shall we make a switch? Yes. So uh, uh, 
you see below the, the how we divide our work more or less. And uh, we have uh, art directors that are really tech savvy. They, they design in the browser and do prototypes when they have time. And the project managers all have a technical background. Um, me, myself, uh, used to be a .NET developer. I don't know if I dare to say it in here. Um, yeah. um, and Sweden.se pair has told a little bit about the challenges so far, but we have some challenges connected to the concept. It was the creation of customized articles, how to group articles like chapters, how to embed facts into the articles, and how to implement fully customized uh, content without, within the solution. Uh, how to implement uh, ad an advanced search to, to WordPress, and how to reach the high performance throughout the world. Uh, and uh, working with a big project in WordPress, we have made some conclusions. Um, and this is for us one of the biggest uh, WordPress projects so far. But it's really important to take your time to, to set up the architecture and uh, do this before the development starts. So uh, uh, don't change that afterwards. Stick to your plan if it's possible. And uh, if you're several developers who create a project, it's always good to have a standard CSS, uh, something that you comment uh, from, from both commenting to versioning. And uh, control your architecture and your plugins, very important. You really have to do it, super important. <laughs> Uh, and we have this checklist when we look at uh, third-party plugins. Um, it's um, is it person controlled or stable? Is there a good community around it? Does it have a track record? Is it adding extra database queries? Is it performing remote requests? Is it loading a lot of script styles on every page? Does it perform complex operations? Does it do one thing or 50? Uh, but I have to say, um, the Sweden.se uses mostly uh, customized plugins that we built ourselves. We only use one or two uh, third party plugins. So let's hop into the solution. Uh, we discussed, or uh, we uh, talked about the, um, the customization of, of articles. And uh, to do so, we, we, um, we build up the article by different parts that we call segments. So we have created a post, uh, custom post type that's called article segments where the editors can uh, create content and choose from different templates uh, between the images, between text and media, which could be film or embedded infographics for example. And um, we do so uh, because we don't want to be stuck in a template, like an article template, so we will be able to uh, to shift the, the order of different parts. So, um, when you're building the article, you use the, the, the basic post in, in WordPress, and you are drag and drop. We put this module to, to select different segments. So you just um, add them in the order you want them, and you can also reuse them in different articles if you want to. Uh, and uh, the good thing about uh, having um, this segment is also when it comes to the responsiveness of the site. You have more control of the content. So for instance here you have um, a fact block to the left. Uh, and normally a responsive site, uh, when it goes into a mobile mode, it will be thrown down in the, in the end of the article. But here it's responsive within the, within the segment. Uh, and um, in order to, to achieve the chapters, um, we added another custom post app that's also uh, lists within the grid uh, that is called, we call it collections, and it's more or less a, a collection of articles. So you can read them in a, a specific order that the editor wants you to read them. Uh, yes, and um, we have the quick facts, uh, which is also in the grid, but they open up in a separate part of the site. To, to give them more attention. Uh, they could also work as a slideshow uh, if you, yeah, if we have this feature in the background as well. Um, and we have the, the customized content. 
Um, and uh, here is an article about migration, which is more or less um, specifically built for this, uh, this article. And uh, um, the statistics and uh, illustrations around the article is more or less hard coded. But uh, here we use WordPress more like a text editor just to, to, to fill in the content. And uh, when it comes to sorting, uh, we use this, um, we use the backbone and we use Packery to uh, um, to uh, generate the, the articles. And we have uh, varnish on this, uh, which makes uh, something like popularity a bit tricky because the caching uh, won't allow that. So we have this kind of hook around varnish that saves. Um, the data into Redis database instead of the normal WordPress database. And when it comes to performance globally, we have WordPress and Varnish, I told you. And um, oh, um, then we upload CSS images and uh, JavaScript to, to Amazon. And we use it as a con content delivery network. And um, the, the problem with WordPress is that you can't really choose where to save your images. So we have a, a hook here on the, on the save event. So when you save an image, it's uploaded to, to Amazon. And we have it also when, when we try to retrieve an image. Uh, then we change the URL uh, into the Amazon URL instead of so the images are received from Amazon. And then we use CloudFront to uh, deliver content throughout the world. Uh, and this is made kind of efficiently, uh, but not so good in China because they have this great wall of firewall. Uh, so we have to do a little special treat there and set up a server in, in China, which is a really big adventure in itself. Uh, yes. Sweden, uh, or some kind of uh, 
promotion bureau or something like that? No, it's, a, um, it's a, an official channel and uh, so it's a Swedish institute, it's visit Sweden, uh, it's the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, it's all the embassies and consulates out there, so we cooperate a lot with the, our embassies and consulates. They are our tool and the way how we connect to the local markets out there. China, for example, we have a colleague working in, at the consulate in Shanghai, helping us out with the screen.cn content. Since neither of us speaks or reads Chinese, right? <laughs> that was the tricky part of that pro project, for sure. Yes, I understand you are not the uh, first company that uh, was cooperating with the uh, Swedish institution. You were only the technical. Yes. Okay, that's a shame. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, so I have a question about the custom article. You said that most of the things was hard coded and so. Yeah. And I have a question. Uh, do you still have a close cooperation with the people who create content and they just come up with ideas all the time about articles and you create this entire hard coded things in needed? Or uh, is it, was it a planned? Uh, well, a planned uh, thing, and uh, you just did it, and now they are just creating content for already created content. What is the mechanism? Yes, uh, we're working really tight together with the Swedish Institute and their editors. So they have, uh, I don't know how many editors? Four, <laughs> yeah, four, uh, who works with the site, and, and some parts of the site are. Uh, I mean, the, the segments and, and the articles they can create uh, like an ongoing process without involving us. But sometimes when they want to do like um, customized content or so, we, we sit together and, and we try to uh, explain what's possible from a technical point of view and they explain what they would like to display and we try to find some concept around that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Have you considered using Visual Composer for building article layout? Because in my mind it has all the features you need. Excuse me. Uh, Visual Composer. It's a WordPress plugin. Oh, the Composer. Uh, yes, uh, actually we are uh, using Composer for not the plugins, but uh, um, like yeah, for Redis and stuff like that to use Composer. And also now in our future projects, we are looking at ways to build the whole WordPress projects with the Composer and also the plugins, so it will be easier to maintain. So yes, we are looking into that now. Actually, and should keep in mind also that, uh, the site was mostly built like three years ago. So if we built it today, maybe we use some more plugins uh, than back then. Okay, first of all, I would like to say it's from the usability point of view a great project. Congratulations. And uh, especially when you think it's governmental <laughs> and it's supported by the government, so you can be proud of for a project. I have a small question. Uh, you are talking about different language uh, sites. Um, do you prefer. Uh, okay, what's the mechanism behind? Do you have a separate website or you use a plugin for it? And if yes, which one? Uh, for this part, it, we use uh, separate setups of, of sites. Okay, so small question, what was the reason to go this way? Uh, for China, for example, it's, it's, it's not possible to, to uh, host it in, in Europe. It's too slow, I mean, it's, it takes 50 seconds or something to, to load it to them. So we had this... Uh, uh, challenge to, to divide the sites anyway, so it wasn't really a question for us to make it a separate setup. But we have used uh, translation plugins in other projects. Uh, what's the name of that one? Uh, w. Uh, w language something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. I have a question about, and uh, continue that question, uh, the can talk about contributions, right? Uh, how do you manage uh, maintaining those separate uh, WordPress sites for country versions? Do you add uh, the same functionalities for both of them, or are you planning to add one to Swedish, one to Chinese, etc.? The, the um, English uh, theme or a site is, is the master, so some of the features 
that's on that side are not on the Chinese side, for instance. Uh, so I think we will keep it that uh, also for the for the Russian project, for, for example, to, to maintain the English as a master. You are famous from your transparency in Sweden, so what is the uh, yearly budget of the project? So, sorry? No. The yearly budget of the project, what is the approx? budget? <laughs> the budget? <laughs> okay, I should be doing this part here. Uh, I'm not a politician myself, so I don't know how to get out of this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's say we spent like two million crowns uh, for the whole project. I would say, including a new identity and workshops. In Europe, Europe. In Europe. Uh, <laughs> to, uh, I'm, I'm not a mathematician either, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two hundred thousand euros times ten, right? A bit more, I think. A bit, a bit more. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't have that number uh, specifically, but uh, sorry, sorry about that. But it, I mean. As for, for, for the CMS, it's free. We, we spent most of the money on the, on the content. We spent a lot of time tuning the website, doing it, uh, uh, making it more responsive. Um, uh, but, you know, it's an investment we did, and we get back that now when we work with uh, Sweden.cn or a Russian or Arabic version. So it's, I would say it's quite efficient comparing to the previous uh, CMS we, we used. I have a question regarding the content. When you started the uh, platform, um, did you have any existing content you moved there, or you just started from the scratch? It's a good question. Thanks. It's a, it, it's a good question. Actually, the old screen of SC site it was massive. It had a lot of content. I think it had something over 2,000 pages. Uh, a lot of the content was outdated, and we wanted, like uh, in my slides here, we wanted, uh, like I showed you, we wanted the. the the content to be uh, relevant, authentic, uh, and updated. So we couldn't really uh, do like modern, like pop music or news. We left that out, and we do that kind of uh, reporting or stories in social media instead to curate or reuse content that we find elsewhere. So at Sweden.SES of today, we find something like around 150 stories uh, and we add new stories now and then when we come up with something that we think uh, our uh, visitors need. Uh, so that's kind of how we frame the, the new setup. But we throw away a lot of those that we translate to pretty much nothing, I would say. So the last question, uh, last question is... Uh, maybe, maybe the last one. Um, what about the security? This kind of site is very important for, for, for Sweden, so um, could you describe a little bit uh, the security reason why you choose WordPress and how much is a good choice? Uh, well, we have taken some precautions like uh, blocking the admin to certain IPs and uh, else. Yeah, we have to SSL on SSL. Yeah, of course, of course. Mm. So I think that's, that's about it. We have some uh, attacks, especially from China, but it's not been that bad. We've been able to handle it quite efficiently. And we don't allow comments of any kind on the site. We uh, encourage people to use Facebook and Twitter and so on for the discussion part. Okay, last question? Yeah. Uh, what was the biggest challenge, like, uh, what uh, took you more time than you previously up now? Um, I, I forgot to tell you, but because we use uh, solar as a search engine in the background, uh, and we use it for filtering and delivery or generating the content, I think that was quite a big challenge for us to, to get that working really efficiently. Uh, but it, it works really nice now when you can enter, as an editor, you can enter different synonyms that people might search for instead of the real name or whatever, and also some misspellings. So um, I think that was, for us, maybe the biggest challenge. Okay, thank you very much, guys, for this thank presentation. You.